Hello, this is GeoTechLand. Let's take a look at what is new in the world of tech. A redesigned GNOME Software Center is in the works, and I must say, it looks amazing. So here's a, a mock-up, and this can change in the final version, obviously. But even just looking at this mock-up, I'm already liking what I'm seeing. Of course, one thing you'll notice is this sidebar, and I think the sidebar is more in line with trying to make the Software Center be more mobile friendly and adaptable which is a good thing so here you'll have uh, an editor's choice and then you'll have some categories to choose from here you'll see recently updated and then more categories here and my first impression of it is this looks really damn good they're also planning on providing more information about each specific app so if you go to this mock-up here you can see that they'll give you the option to install an application, whether only for this particular user or system wide. And then here, I think this is a very interesting because it gives you a lot more information about the app from the download size, the safety or privacy of the app, how adaptive it is, and the content rating. It gives you more information about how the app is built and a few links to donate and go to the app creator's website. This interface here, if even again, this is just a mock-up. This already feels better than the Mac store and even better than the Google or any other store I've seen. So that's a really good sign. PinePhone picks a default OS, but it's not the one that we were all expecting. I wasn't even sure they'd ever pick a default OS as they've been releasing different community editions of their PinePhone. I just kind of assumed that they would do that forever, but it looks like they've put a pause on that now and they are gonna dedicate themselves to one OS and it's gonna be Manjaro's Plasma Mobile Edition. And their reasoning for this is that they have a long-standing partnership with the team at Manjaro. Manjaro has released different ARM-based OSs for pretty much all of Pine's devices like their PineBook Pro, their system on chip and of course the pine phone they've also had a long-standing partnership with the team at kde and i guess it's more so that they've built good relationships with these two organizations and that's kind of why they decided to make this the default and then speaking of kde they've also recently released plasma 5.21 which is their desktop environment and they've made some noticeable improvements they've added a new application launcher They've announced a new theme, Breeze Twilight, which has both light and dark theme, and they both look really good. They also are releasing a new Plasma system monitor, which looks amazing. It actually reminds me of the Deepin system monitor a little bit. They've brought Plasma more up to date with Kwin and Wayland. While Plasma's theme is still not my favorite, they've made some nice improvements and I think they're headed in a good direction. If you're enjoying my content, you can subscribe to me on YouTube, PeerTube, and follow me on Odyssey. You can also support me on LibraPay, Patreon, and by shopping at Earth Hero. See links in the description below. Apple lawyers are fighting for Steam sales data on hundreds of games. So Apple has subpoenaed Valve uh, in November and part of its ongoing litigation with uh, Epic Games. They're saying that Valve's data is necessary to calculate the size of the market of Epic's available distribution channels. And they're saying that Epic can just offer their games in Steam and so they're not completely dependent on Apple. And Valve's countering with the fact that Valve doesn't make any games for mobile. Like Epic's argument is that they're kind of forced to rely on Apple and, and have to pay their fee. And Apple's trying to say, well, they don't really, they don't need to release their app on the App Store. They have an option of going with Steam which kind of doesn't make sense, but I guess there's some some theory that Apple is just also trying to gain information about sales on Steam, you know, maybe because they're launching their, they've launched their own Apple Arcade. It just looks kind of odd and Valve has given them some information. It seems that Apple wants way more information than Valve is willing to give. It, it just kind of makes Apple look bad here. And speaking of making Apple look bad, North Dakota lawmakers jump into Apple Epic fight with new App Store bill. So lawmakers in North Dakota came up with a bill that will force Apple and Google to let 
users download and install apps using other app stores and google is pretty much in the clear already because they already allow you to do that you know you can install something like fdroid on google but of course apple there's only one way to install apps through their own app store and of course that means that you'll have to give a, a cut uh, or a percentage of your sales to apple and so the lawmakers state the purpose of the bill is to level the playing field for app developers in North Dakota and protect customers from devastating monopolistic fees imposed by big tech companies. And again, I feel like this should be the norm that people should be allowed to download um, in any app store, not just Apple's or Google's own app stores. The argument will be it could be a security risk, but people are aware. And if there are other trusted third party app stores, then I think it should be fine and people will know what they're signing up for by doing that. Parler says it's back without big tech after being kicked off of Amazon. So Parler was using Amazon's hosting services and they were kicked off by Amazon as it's a very controversial social network. And Parler had sued Amazon, but the federal judge denied Parler's request for a preliminary injunction. So now Parler is using hosting services from a company called Skysilk. Last month, Parler.com had moved their domain to Epic, a domain registrar that is also providing services to Gab. So if you're tired of your speech being censored by billionaires like Mark Zuckerberg and Jack Dorsey, you can always have your speech censored by billionaires like the Mercer family as they're the ones funding the Parler social network here. Google has fired their second AI ethics researcher following internal investigation. It all started with Mitchell and Jebru who were working on a paper about the dangers of large language processing models when Megan Kekolia, vice president of Google Brain, asked that the article be retracted. Jebru pushed back, saying the company needed to be more open about why the research wasn't acceptable. Shortly afterwards, she was fired. The Google characterized her departure as a resignation. The theory is that they found something negative uh, when researching the dangers and Google asked them to retract the article and they didn't really state why. So I guess they got suspicious and then that's why they pushed back and then they got fired. Or according to Google, they said that she resigned. And then Margaret Mitchell, the co-lead of the ethical AI team, uh, tried using an automated script to look through her emails. I guess she was trying to find evidence of discrimination against her coworker, Timnit Gebru. And this is when Google uh, fired her. So it just kind of comes across as very shady and it just shows the power that Google has here. You have reached the end of this episode. If you like this content, tune in next week for some more awesome tech news.